Howdy y'all, my name is Brent Hamilton, Mist Runner. Toll War the Mist Runner tribe, and today I want to talk to y'all about Heroic Steam Vault. Steam Vault is the third and final of the Coal Fang Reservoir Heroics. And I'm going to take y'all through pull by pull and talk about how it's done. So first thing, got a couple Coal Fang Warriors, sword and board, pretty simple stuff. Just fight them straight up. Keep threat on skull, keep threat on X, keep up battle shot. Hold commanding shot if your group's getting blacked. You might notice something different about me if you've uh, seen some of the other videos. I crafted Dragon Maw, which is the tier 2 one handed weapon, 91 DPS. Increased haste on it, 2.7 speed. It may be thread best for this phase. I'm not sure. I'm testing it now. Let's pull this group. I don't know why that triangle is over there. Well, that's part of the other one. So these sirens cast a fear. Tremor Totem Fear Ward. You gotta assume you're gonna be feared. Notice the fear effect is a magical one. We pulled the other group. No problem. Get a thunderclap. Just go ahead and pop a defensive. Get a last stand starting off this dungeon but as you can see the fear is the first main mechanic you have to watch out for the priest just mind controlled one and I'm just tabbing through tab targeting making sure this is attacking brunt is this attacking brunt now it is is this attacking brunt yes it is one of the really cool things about this one hander as a tank weapon is your devastates hit like a truck Check this out. This is a Devastate. 162, 236, 513 crit, 297, 658 crit. The Devastate spam is very strong when you have a slow weapon. If you think about it for warrior tanking, if you get a fast weapon, that means you can heroic strike more often, which is good for spending rage. If you have a slow main hand weapon, that means your Devastates hit really hard. So if I'm just hitting... Devastate and Heroic Strike at the same time, and Shield Block, I'm able to spend my Rage pretty well, even against these Bog Overlords who hit fairly hard. This guy's doing like an AoE Poison Tick to all of us. There's also this Fungal Decay, Nature Damage every 3 seconds. Disease can be dispelled with Cure Disease. And I like to take a route around here on the right side. Why did that not get reset? So we're going around the outside. Checking Healer Mana, looks good. these hitting for? Perry, Perry, Absorb, Perry, Perry. 2.8k on Heavy Plate. These guys are pretty tough. You really don't want to pull one of these with the other packs. Really tough part about Steam Vaults is the packs are very close to each other. So you want to do nice and conservative pulls. Pull them back to a safe spot. So we'll go ahead and mark this one skull. We can just pull it around the corner. Shadow Priest wants to grab this one. Sure. Mind control is fun. Got to put my shoot bow over here. I use throw for PvP and then I do shoot for PvE because my bow has hit. Let's just pull that. Stomp these. Reduce that incoming damage a bit. And I see that caster one is attacking someone else, but I'm netted, so I can't get over to it right now. Nice paladin stun. As soon as that net is up, I'm gonna get over to this one. Taunt it. Interrupt it. Go back to tanking. Devastate cleave shield block. Checking that battle shout. It's up and it's good. Two minutes. Shield blocking every time. Interrupting that lightning bolt. Sirens cast lightning bolt and AoE fear. Look at that. Undead can break it will forsaken. You can also PvP trinket if you have that on for some reason. 
Tremor Totem is good, Fear Ward is good. And it's a magical fear from the Sirens, which means if the Paladin or the Priest is not feared, they can dispel that. The main danger would be getting feared into other packs. So I see an opportunity here. These Tidal Surgers are away from other groups. I'm going to pull it around. And this is our safe spot. There are a lot of patrols that are going around in these rooms. Anything that's not attacking me, I just pick it up. What? Did I update the wrong macro? Oh, it's on my spell reflect. I see. Yeah, my spell reflect macro, I'll show you real quick. Show tooltip, spell reflection. Cast defensive stance. Equip shield of impenetrable darkness. Equip thunder fury, blessed blade of the wind seeker. Cast spell reflection. And we can leave that. And I have another macro, sword and board. Macros. Equip shield, equip weapon. If you put it in that order, you don't have to specify slot. Sometimes it'll try to put it as a weapon or an offhand or something. If you just have equip weapon. I got two devastates and a shield slam on skull. That should be mine for a bit. These ones have a two-handed axe. I always like using disarm on two-hander enemies. Dramatically reduces the damage you take. Demo Shout is also good against heavy physical attackers. Nice pull. So we want to be really careful here. There's a patrol. We'll go ahead and pull this one on the right in the hallway. Continuing to use the same safe spot. Right back here. Look at all this. It's practically a city center over there. Making sure I got all of them. Mind control on the skull. Gush and blow. Reducing the incoming damage taken. Be sure to taunt. Mind control is a crap ton of threat. That was 30k threat from the Shadow Priest. Using that mind control ability. Now this hallway is pretty clear for a bit. If you want to play it extra safe, you can pull this pack. We're just going to pull this one. And I'm going to give our rogue... Sap target. Sirens are nice and safe here. Okay. So I'm going to give the Shadow Priest a Siren to mind control. It means we'll get feared less. Now we can use the hallway as part of our safe zone. They're right between charge and intercept range. I'm going to stun this one. Another warrior. Disarm him, why not? Battle shout. Very good. This as soon as it's dropped. We got it. Alright, we'll have to watch out for that water elemental pool. 
We can use this area now as a safe spot. Pull way back up here. Let's get a sap skull mind control. See, there's another patrol over there. This place is just swarming with patrols. So you want to be very careful about your pulls. And you want to be patient. We're going to use an ancient technique here called Way the Fuck Back. I'm going to pull this way over here. Devastate this one a couple times. I should have it. I'm going to interrupt this one, taunt it, bring it back. Those water elementals are going to be back soon. Concussion blow this guy. Take some pressure off my heater. Alright, we went ahead and pulled this. I'm just going to taunt this. Demo shout, reduce the incoming damage overall. Shadow Priest got blapped by the mind controlled unit. I'm gonna interrupt this. Let's pop a defensive. Give our hero a little bit more room. And I can also stun something. Let's stun this big one. I like that. Surger's almost dead. Interrupt that cleave, or that heal, sorry. Oracles cast a heal. And we have an opportunity to maybe save this bull for the shield wall. Or maybe we're too um. Good try. Run back for this one is not the best. You have to go across the lake, into this, down and through, and then into the dungeon. A little bit scuffed, a little bit messy. But we can get there. Yeah, another tricky thing with mind control is the priest is rooted in place whenever they're channeling the mind control. So they have to be aware of where their character was when they started casting it, because you get the camera control of whatever unit you have. So we cleared the patrol, most of the stuff. There may just be one more left in that pack, plus the water patrol. One of the most important things, not just as a tank, but as a party member, is to be able to take your punches and just roll with it. It never feels good to wipe. It's always nice to have a mint crispy clean run but stuff happens and people make mistakes sometimes it's you sometimes it's someone else and if you're going to be poopy to somebody because they made a mistake well that's just ammo for them to do the same to you and that's just a, a nasty back and forth of being impatient and cruel to each other So we swimming down, getting some ghostly swimming practice. Amazing. I'm also cute for AV. What's your opinion on the same faction battlegrounds? People have mixed opinions on it. As a member of the Horde, I would say it's nice to be able to actually get to PvP. Rather than wait half an hour to 45 minutes. And we're back. So we're going to hug the right wall, moving around the room. If you're doing this on normal, you can just clear the whole place because you get rep pretty efficiently. In heroics, though, you have to fight a lot harder for each kill. You get three more rep instead of 12 per mob. It's maybe 15 or so. I can't see it now because I'm exalted with this faction. Scenarian Expedition. 
one of the nice things you can get for your Cenarian rep, factions, Cenarian expedition. Where is that? There we are. Exalted. Nature res chest. I should probably learn that. Nature res ring. Jewel crafting. War hippogriff. Healing offhand. Spell hit ring. Feral mace. 24 expertise, 27 defense. If you're a feral tank, this is amazing. I would probably shoot for getting Cenarian Exalted first. we have left one oracle let's get it bow skill increase at 324 so I wanted to show you maybe the devastate hits from this 186 there let's interrupt that back it up back it up back it up let's just pull that yeah not now Devastate, devastate, devastate. One on each. Be careful not to pull the boss up there. Spell reflect. Nice. Disarm the physical. Very good. Now we're at the first boss. Skull X Triangle. These are two ads. They're both elites, but they don't have a ton of health. By focusing them down, you eliminate sources of damage. And you can focus on the boss after that. The boss does a thundercloud effect, and we're going to try not to stand in it. Let's go kick ass. Five, four, three, two, one. Shield slam the skull. Devastate the boss, devastate the X, revenge the X, go back to the skull. Now I'm cleaving, shield slamming, and pulling the stuff out of the cloud. Enveloping winds on me. I'm stunned. That can be dispelled. It was dispelled. Very good. I'm a concussion blow. I'm move everything out of the lightning cloud. Deals a lot of damage. And we got just the boss left. Lightning cloud again. Lung burst. She cast that on someone. It deals damage. I believe it can be dispelled. Magic dispels. Enveloping winds. Magic effect. Nice dispel. Paladin healers. Priest healers. Well, paladins and priests in general can dispel magic. Druids and shamans cannot. Don't forget to loot your band of justice. Oh, and you have to click this uh, terminal console thing. One thing I forgot. This organ looking thing goes up here. You have to right click that and there's another one of those. That you have to click to unlock the room to the final boss chamber. We roll. 
the corium vein. I guess we lost. They have to be careful of that water elemental pack. You could pull it to be safe, but you want to be really careful that it's not between or right next to one of these packs. And now we continue. Got a sap target. Sap and diamond. Does he know? And we're pulling. One dev state on X. Working on thread on skull. Looks good. Shadow Priest is one of the most bursty threat classes relative to gear. They're going to do a lot more threat than a rogue will. You can notice here the Shadow Priest is doing 420 DPS and the rogue is doing 574. But if you're looking at the threat meter, the Shadow Priest is doing way more threat for their damage. Another warrior, disarm for days. All right. I don't know if we can sap these uh, myrmidons. Need to be careful of this patrol, we might just pick that up first. Gonna let him do his thing. Yep, you can zap him. No problem. Battle shot to get initial threat. Line of sight around the corner. This is a sorceress. She might try some sorcery. Shield slamming it. Got plenty of threat on skull. Now I'm going to switch to X. Just taking a look over here. We're way ahead. And skull is dead. Whenever you mark the skull as a caster unit, you don't really have to perfectly manage threat on it. If a rogue pulls threat on a sorceress, they can handle themselves fine. Same thing with a ret or a DPS warrior. Usually the physical attacks of a caster unit are not super great. It's mainly damage from spells which they can interrupt. Now we got a good bit of room here. So I'm gonna charge pull. Charge, defensive stance, blood rage, shield slam. Got a bunch of threat on that one. I got a spell reflect off. Watching my thread on these. X looks good. I can stun this guy. And interrupt that blizzard. All these packs are optional. You can skip them. Just hug the right hand side. You notice this main chamber door is over here. It's locked. We have to go click the other console behind the second boss. Over through here. Uh, 
Maybe we can just pull two. Or wait. You could sheep these, they're humanoid. You can also use Hunter Trap. Two-handed guy. Disarm every time. There is a haste brock on this mace. I haven't seen a brock too often. It looks like a, a dodge kind of icon. Mm, there's a locked chest. Shield slam. These slaves are elite here, unlike slave pins. But if you kill the slave master, then they all run free. And if it's on heroic and you're not really pushing rep, then that's usually what I prefer to do. It's just more ethical. Increase attack speed here. You can see weapon swinging a good bit faster. 2.38. Instead of the listed 2.7. Now this one we got to be careful. Because he'll ask for assistance from the slaves. Just trying to pull him when he's right there. He may pull that right hand pack of stuff. If you ever queue for a battleground and say, hey, I can just fit in this dungeon, but then you don't have time. That's what just happened. Alright. Look at those picking on this guy. You can mainly just ignore him, just make sure the healer doesn't get aggro. Taunting, bashing it, demo shouting it. We just tanking it. You can CC one of these. Take some pressure off. Disarm as well. Always good. And he should be free now. Why is he still fighting? Mm, bummer. Alright, coming up on second boss. Now we have some big gnome packs. Pretty easy. Charge in, defensive stance, thunderclap, demo shout. And spell reflect as well. Get that thunder fury AoE threat. bashing it. There are usually a couple mining nodes around here. Sometimes they're hidden in the bushes, so you may have to dig around a little bit. Looking at healer mana, we're good. These just do gnome things. Cast spells, throw rocks, try to hit you. I'm just tabbing through, checking to see if they're targeting Brunt. Brunt. Healer, let's taunt it. Healer. Shield slam it. Brunt. Tab. Healer. These don't hit very hard. So even if you don't have every single one, it's fine. These do heal the boss though, so I like to mark them. Skull X Triangle. Gnomes heal boss. Attack gnomes. Let's do it. Thunderclap. Demo shout. I should have most of the ads on me. And I'm working on thread on the boss. And I can cleave. I can war stomp to interrupt. If I wanted to, I could AoE Fear. This does an electrified net thing. He's hidden for what? 1200, 1600 on heavy plate. Not too bad. 
DPS are killing the gnomes. And that green beam they channeled is healing the boss. Just gonna make sure you take these out. And then focus on the boss. Use a shrink ray on people. Electrified net. Just make sure you're killing those gnomes. There's actually a pilot up there. I don't know if you noticed that. But he's controlling that thing. Spell crit damage and healing. Don't forget to loot your badge. And you also want to click this console here. Main chamber access panel. And in the chat it should say, you hear a faint echo, you hear a loud rumble of metal grinding on stone. And that's when you know that it worked. Another node here. Sometimes there's one back there as well. Just check your mini map. One of the best quality of life changes they made in BC is your find or tracking whatever feature you have. It stays on even when you die. Used to be that you had to click it on every time you died and came back. Now we're heading back, just through this hallway, and that door that was locked should now be unlocked. Those are the packs we can skip. You could kill them for rep. Sometimes there's a daily quest to kill these Myrmidons. Let's get a sap. Here. Marked a diamond. The way that I'm doing these target markers is I have them bound to the F keys. Key bindings, target markers. F1 through F8. So I just target them. Hit a button on a keyboard and it's good to go. Five. Four, three, two, one. Charge, battle shout, defensive stance, blood rage, shield slam, demo shout, devastate skull, tab, devastate triangle, disarm, offensive trinket, taunt the skull, get it back on me. The X is running around doing who knows what, but I'm frost nobody, so I'm gonna go over here and get it. Shield slamming it. This Myrmidon guy does a cleave, which is what's hitting the rogue. It's good to make sure the DPS know the target priority. Usually I do Skull X Triangle Square. That helps you prioritize your threat output to match the DPS output. A lot of times people complain about the tank losing threat, but there's no agreed upon DPS order, which makes the job nearly impossible. People are attacking all kinds of different stuff. And for warriors especially, you can deal a lot of threat on one thing at a time, but Thunderclap and Demo Shout, they're not really that much AoE threat. Yep, the Oracle can Frost Shock, heal, Sonic Burst, which is a silence. 10 second silence on these oracles. Definitely a good kill target. The sirens fear though, so. You've got pretty gnarly abilities to deal with no matter which way you slice it. I interrupt that lightning bolt if I can. There we go. I'm feared for a second. There's that heal.
Weaving. Devastating. Gonna get this sap target now that it's up. Revenge shield block. Offensive trinket. Double check that battle shout. Now we got the haste and the mongoose at the same time. Weapon speed is 2.1. We got 26.13% haste. Fantastic. That's a lot of haste. I imagine this would have more procs on it if we had Wind Fury Totem. And Bloodlust. Pretty excited to try this thing out on Gruul. Pull this pack back. Line of sight. Quite a bit of burst there. A little more stomp. Stop the incoming damage for a little bit. No feared. X is casting a heal. It's gonna get off. Devastates on that. Shield bash on that. And I'll get a stun on this one. Checking the threat meter. Looks good. Checking the threat meter. The healer's got a bunch. Nice. We got the haste plus mongoose again. That one's clear. We can just charge pull this one. We'll still get some CC going. All right, charge pull, charge defensive stance, shield slam. Tons of threat on the skull. Two devastates on the X. Tab to the triangle. Interrupted. Shield slammed. Well, I'm feared. But soon to be shield slammed. There we go. Get this one back. These pulls are a lot easier with Tremor Totem. Fear Ward is also good. But that is on a cooldown. Lightning Bolt. Nope, your concussion blow. A tab over. I devastate, devastate. She heroic Strike. Bloodthirst. Devastate Heroic. Threat for days. Big two-hander, what do we do? Disarm it every time. Demo shout it every time. We lose threat, we taunt it every time. Right away. Alright, boss time. So he's apparently doing some important work here. These tanks are the way that we get this guy to cool off. He's really mad, and he gets even more mad. Pretty simple physical hitting boss. You want to tank him directly next to the tanks. So I charge in, blood thirst, or blood rage. Get some rage. You can put him next to whatever tank. I'm just devastating and backing it up. Shield slamming it. Getting the battle shout. Shield slamming. Okay, whenever the Warlord's Rage thing happens, that red beam happens, you want to kill this distiller right away. Boss hits really hard. If you don't, and see the water comes out, now he's chill. We gotta pull him to the next one now. Spell reflection. If you're a spellcaster, you can switch to your wand. You can see the priest doing that there. Okay. 
kill the distiller. It is cooled off. We may need to repeat that one more time. We may not. But it's good to pull him over just in case. He's hitting kind of hard. It's not really too bad if he's not enraged. So just do the mechanic and you should be fine. And that's the boss. Five badges, six stam. That's a tank jam right there. What else does boss drop? A lot of people will want to run this one. Especially hunters. Uh, for the bow. Wrath Tide Longbow. It's got some like... What are they called? Manta Rays. Also some pretty nice tank bracers. Agi, Strength, Stam, Defense. Damage and Healing MP5, Male Wrist. And some Healing Cloth Pants. Need that. Greed that. Need that. Oh, and that's the heroic data for the day. Well, hope you all found this run informative. Steam Vaults is a pretty tricky one. If you take the pulls pretty conservatively and you pull them to safe zones, then you can handle it fairly well. There's a ton of fear in this instance, so, and a lot of patrols as well. So make sure you're not getting feared into other packs, and also make sure you keep an eye out for the patrols. One thing I recommend doing is just marking patrols as they're walking around. I like to put a circle or a star on them so we can track them off in the distance a little bit easier to visually keep track of everything. Hope you all found this walkthrough useful. For me, Brunt, half a ton of Mist Runner, told more of that Mist Runner tribe. But don't forget to repair before you leave town. Be cool to each other. An ancestor's watch over you. <laughs>